We got more MCAT practice questions for you guys. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to pick the best answer and I'm gonna explain to you guys why the other answers are wrong and what you need to know when you're gonna take the test, okay? I'm gonna give you guys some background information of what you need to know, all that stuff. All right, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric and I'm on a mission to make sure this MCAT is as easy as possible for you guys. All right, real quick, let's do this. This is question number 14. Do it on your own first and then hear me break it down and see, you know, if you got them all right. You know, I hope you got them all right. This is the MCAT sample test as well. All right, is this a spoiler? Yeah, it's a spoiler. But to be honest, a sample test is nothing compared to the real test, okay? I've gotten plenty of students that say the same exact thing. All right, sample test is probably the easiest one, okay? Not even, guys, you should be studying your asses off because not even like the FLs are being representative of the real exam. I've heard plenty of stories of students that just got like destroyed on the real test thinking that, you know, they're FLs and where the thing that the FLs were like very similar to the real exam. So you guys got to prepare for fucking war, okay? Prepare for war, take the MCAT once, and yeah, that's all you gotta do, guys. All right, so study hard. So do this on your own first. This is question 14, this is question 15, question 16, and question 17. All right, I'm gonna do this real quick. Let's jump in. The structure of the triterpene squalene is shown. Squalene is produced in the human body as a precursor to which important class of compounds, all right? You should know what this is. You should know what terpenes are. You should know what makes terpenes, okay? Isoprenes make terpenes. Terpenes make cholesterol, and cholesterol can make steroids, steroids and, you know, steroid hormones, okay? So you should know that, and you should know that this is going to make steroid hormones, okay? Triacylglycerol, you should know the structure of that. That's just a glycerol with three fatty acids esterified to it. You should know what esterified is. Phospholipids, um, so it's a phosphate and uh, fatty acid, okay? There is no phosphate here, so you should eliminate B, you should eliminate A. Prostaglandins, you should know what prostaglandins are. You don't have to go too much in depth. That's very, very low yield, all right? It's literally just a fatty acid. It's made from arachidinoic acid. And in order to know that it's a prostaglandin, you should see a five carbon ring on it, okay? And they're long. Prostaglandins are like 20 carbons long. They're, they're pretty long, okay? So the only one that makes sense here is number, no, not number, letter C, okay? Comment down below if you need any help on any of these questions, guys. I got you. Question 15. What is the concentration of Cl minus ions in a 0.1 molar solution of calcium chloride? All right, guys. I always recommend you guys to actually read the words in the question, all right? Like literally, it says ions. So what does that mean? It means something is being broken down into its constituent ions, all right? Calcium chloride is being broken down into its ions. So as soon as I see this, I'm going to think something dissolves, all right? So CaCl2 dissolves and is broken down into its ions, like I said. So you have Ca. 2 plus, what the hell is this? Get away. And you have two Cl minus ions in here, okay? And they told us that we had a 0 0.1, 0 0.1 molarity solution of calcium chloride. So this is going to be 0 0.1 molarity, and this is going to be broken down, and we're going to get a concentration of 0 0.1 molarity of calcium ions okay why is it 0.1 well it's 0.1 because there's only one of these okay there's only one mole of calcium ions here but in the chloride ions we have two we have two cl minus ions per cacl2 that's broken down so it's not going to be 0.1 it's going to be 0.2 all right now eric how the heck this is a common common question that people ask me how the heck do we go from 0.1, all right, we have 0.1. How do we go from 0.1 to 0.2? How does that make sense at all? All right, well, guys, it's broken down, okay? It's broken down. So think about, think about like this, all right? And if you understand this already and you're mastered this, then you can go ahead and skip this part, all right? But let's say you had a bicycle, okay? Let's say you had a bicycle. This is your bicycle here, all right? This is the tires, this is the frame. Okay, and let's say I put this bicycle in water and that water magically broke the bicycle apart. Okay, when I put in water, we're gonna get the frame here. 
and we're gonna get the two tires here. Okay, these are tires. All right. I had one mole of bicycle in a liter of water in the beginning. So I had one molarity of bicycle, okay? That broke down. Now, if I ask you, hey, what is the concentration of tires in the solution, all right? Well, the concentration of tires in the solution is going to be two molarity, all right? We have two tires. We have two moles of tires over that same liter. So we're gonna have two molarity. That is the concentration of tires. The concentration of the frame is one molarity, okay? Just because, you know, this is point one, it could also become point two when it's broken down, all right? We're not adding any water, we're not getting rid of any water. There's still one liter in the beginning and there's still one liter at the end. The only thing is that I'm asking you for the molarity of the tires. The only thing is that I'm asking you for the molarity of Cl minus ions, okay? Make sure you guys understand that. That's pretty, that's pretty high yield, I'd say. So point two is the answer here. Question 16, addition of which disaccharide to a solution of Ag2O in NH3 will not result in the deposition of shiny silver mirror on the walls of the reaction vessel. Okay, low yield, but you must understand this, all right? When you see this, you should think, all right? If you do not know what this is, you gotta review your carbohydrates, all right? This is Toland's reagent. Well, what the heck is Toland's reagent? Well, this is Toland's reagent real quick, all right? Toland's reagent, what they do is they grab silver oxide, that's what this is called, and they put it into a solution of ammonia, all right? They mix this and they get Ag um, NH3 2 plus, okay? They get this molecule here. And they use this molecule to see if there are any reducing sugars present, okay? So let's say we had a reducing sugar present. All right, if we had a reducing sugar present, that reducing sugar will reduce this. It will give an electron to this. Okay, reduce, reduction is gaining. So this will get reduced, all right? And uh, all you have to know is that when this gets reduced, when it gets that electron, it's gonna, a silver powder will form or silver color, okay? If this does not get an electron, no electron, okay? That means there's no reducing sugar present. There's not gonna be any silver, okay? So the only way we're gonna get silver if is if there's a reducing sugar present, okay? That's how it checks. Now, they're asking you which will not result in the deposition of shiny silver mirrors. So which is not a reducing sugar? Because if it is not a reducing sugar, it will not produce the silver. All right, so how do I know if a sugar is a reducing sugar? Well, if it has a hemiacetal group on it, all right? So what is a hemiacetal group? Well, this right here is a hemiacetal group. Okay, if you're looking at this carbon here, a hemiacetal group has that alcohol, okay, as an OH here. It's got an O with an R group, it's got an ether, okay? It's got an R chain here, so carbons, and it's got a hydrogen here, all right? I'll write it out here so it's a little easier for you guys to see. All right, this is a hemiacetal group. You must understand this, all right? It's O, H, there's an H here. All right, the placement of these don't really matter. So you have an O, you have an R here as well, okay, R prime, and then you have a different R group here. I'm gonna make this R2 here. That is your hemiacetal group, know it. So let's see. Here we have the OH, the O, the R. Yep, this is a hemi acetal group, okay? This one is the same thing as this, literally the same thing. So this is a hemiacetal group. This one, again, OH, O, R group, hydrogen. This is a hemiacetal group. Hemiacetal group here, hemiacetal group here, hemiacetal group here. These are all reducing sugars. Let's look at this guy, sucrose. This is not a hemiacetal group. Eric, why is it not one? Well, we have the O, we have the R chain here but we don't have an OH directly connected to this, okay? There's carbon and then OH. We need a straight up, straight OH, okay? Not carbon and then OH, all right? You should also memorize that sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. So 
therefore, the one that's not going to make the shiny silver is D. All right, let's keep going. What is the net charge of the peptide arginine, alanine, phenylalanine, leucine at pH 8? pH 8 is very, you can treat pH 8 as you would pH 7. Okay, it's a very neutral pH. So once you get a pH 9, then you got to start memorizing some side chains and start, you know, getting a little complicated there. But pH 8, very neutral. Treat it as these amino acids as such. Okay, so arginine, you know it's a positive amino acid. So we have a plus one here. So far it's plus one, alanine is neutral, phenylalanine is neutral, leucine is neutral. The total net charge, okay, net meaning the total charge is plus one, bam, C. All right, and I'm gonna, okay, so that's it. So I'm gonna comment down below if I got all these right. Comment down below anything you guys want me to make a video on, any lessons, tutorials, whatever. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one.